Hilston Hospital. Thank God for Eggleston. Thank God for the Lord, but I mean, yeah. and power of God, but, but he did use Eggleston. I got it right there. And, uh, and he helped those ladies and those doctors, and, and God touched that boy. But I'm going to tell you something. Preacher, you talk about something, okay? So I'm going to tell you, I never prayed so hard in all my life as I did then. I mean, we prayed all the time. We were down on our knees. The only time we wasn't on our knees is when we was in the car driving to the hospital. We was begging God to help our boy, Lord, help our boy. I'm talking about, is, is there anything in your life that you are like that? You, you may have people, listen, I said a while ago about missions is about salvation. Maybe I know this is true with me. I've got people in my own family. Talk about going to the mission field. That's great. But I got, and I'm for it, but I got people in my own family I don't pray for enough. Yeah. Oh, I got them on my prayer list, and I pray for them every day. I'm talking about lost folks, cousins, uncles. I got an uncle right now, just went to see, down in the, uh, uh, Gulfport, Mississippi. Had cancer in his mouth. I grew up with him. My daddy was the oldest out of 12 kids. I, I didn't have any brothers myself, but I grew up with some of my uncles. And my uncle Connie was just like a brother to me. He was an older brother. But I looked up to him. He was in the Marine Corps. And he was my hero. He retired from the Navy. Switched over to the Navy. Retired. Living down in Gulfport, Mississippi. And I don't know if Connie's saved. I don't think so. I pray for him every day. But I got to admit, I've wondered sometimes have I ever supplicated for it. I'm talking about if I ever just put everything aside and said, I'm going to fast. I'm, gonna not, I'm not even going to think about anything else but that person's soul. And I'm talking about getting down for hours and maybe even days and praying and praying and begging God. 1 Timothy 2.1 says, I exhort therefore that first of all, Listen to me. Talk about missions. First of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. You know, you know what's going to bring revival? I can tell you this right now. It's not, and don't get me, I'm, I'm not against rules. I, I, I've got to be careful about saying it. I'm not saying throw all the rules out the window. You ought to keep the Bible rules, amen, and just obey the Bible. Right. But let me tell you what's going to bring revival to America. Prayer. Supplicating prayer. I, I'm not just talking about, oh, God, send revival. Right. No, no, I, I'm talking about, here, here's what he said right here. First of all, supplications. And then he says prayers. You know, I, I'm not a real smart preacher, but I kind of got an idea that if he says supplications and then prayers, there must be a difference. Right. That's right. Amen. Amen. How do you just say prayers? Philippians 4, 6, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. If the servant of God's going to do, accomplish anything for the Lord, it'll be done through prayer. You better learn to pray. Prayer will sustain you when all else fails. That's right. Amen. James 5, 16 says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amen. Prayer is communion with God. We need communion for wisdom, for strength, for power, and for purity. Right. Little prayer, little power. Some prayer, some power. Much prayer, much power. Amen. And then I come to the next one. Number five is this. Missions is about steadfastness. Yes, sir. 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Have a bulldog attitude. Amen. Your preacher's got that. Amen. I believe your preacher's got that. He looks like a bulldog man. <laughs> And that pastor was a bulldog. I'm not kidding. That's what we, we, we termed him that way. He was a bulldog. Matter of fact, he didn't like bulldogs. He got later where he got popped to the three of them. <laughs> <laughs> you got bulldogs. I knew it. I knew it. See, that prophets. Amen. Right from God. God's on there. I'm telling you, pastor. I'm talking about steadfastness. Amen. Thank God for some people.
people that just stand. Just stand. The Bible says, Ephesians chapter 6, it says, put on the whole armor of God and do what, Rod? Lay down, take it down. No, no, it says stand. You see, the statistics tell us this, if you believe anything about statistics. The average time that a missionary stays on the field or a pastor stays at a church is two years. And I kind of believe that. I, I run across some of that. I don't doubt it. I don't know if they're talking about some bunch of liberal preachers now, but I'm talking about that statistics. But my friend, before he went to heaven in 1980, 82, my friend, Brother Lester Roloff, said it like this. He said, it's a battlefield, brother, not a recreation room. Run if you want to. Run if you will. But I came here to stay. Amen. Amen. God's looking for some folks that have some stick em power. That'll just stay in there. Steadfast. Unmovable. 2 Corinthians 4 8. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. That's right. We are perplexed, but not in despair. That's right. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus, yes. that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Yeah, amen. Paul had a lot of trouble when he preached the gospel in Asia. But you know what his attitude was? 2 Timothy 4, 7, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Can you say that? Which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but to all them that love his appearing. I'm talking about missions is about staying with it. Sticking to it. During this week, the Lord may speak to your heart even about giving or upping your giving. I don't know what you give now, but if you don't give, you ought to give. And the Lord will speak to your heart if you'll let him and want him to. He'll speak to your heart about giving. And you know what you do? You say, Lord, uh, I'm going I'm to give this. Boy, I tell you what, if you're like me, the first month that comes along, Woo! And you'll say, uh-oh, what did I do? And all of a sudden, some bill will come out of the clear blue. You didn't even know the air conditioner was tearing up. Something will happen. Brakes will go out on the car. I mean, I just own and on. You, uh, the water heater will stop working. And all it goes, amen? And you're saying, I promise to give this money to missions. I'm talking about being steadfast. Unmoving. Are you steadfast? Are you unmoving? Then the last thing is this. Missions is about support. Yes, I'm talking about financial support. Let's cut through all the hype. I'm not trying to make it smell good. Amen. Put flour on it. 